this should look fairly familiar um, since you've been working in spreadsheets for a good bit now you should recognize this as a spreadsheet now let's say um, just for argument's sake that you've been given the job of keeping up with assets and the owners of the assets within your company uh, could be for different reasons could be technology uh, this could be uh, you know, that you're keeping up with an inventory of the list of computers of people that work for you uh, it could be different equipment that could be loaned out to people or could be assigned to individuals and you need to keep up with a list so you're going to have your contact name and your spreadsheet and this, if you were going to use a spreadsheet I'm using this to show you the reasons for having a database uh, so you're going to have the contact name which would actually be multiple entries because you're going to have first name, last name, prefix, suffix, uh, entry slots then you're going to have contact address which again you're going to have multiple entries here multiple fields because you're going to have uh, street address uh, city state zip code um, contact phone might have a couple of phone numbers email address uh, contact account number if they have any type of account number but then you've also got a list of specific asset that this individual has so you've got asset asset condition the acquired date for the asset uh, you've got the asset retirement date so you've got basically the length of the life uh, cycle of the product the value of the asset the lien possibly against the asset so you've got a lot of information here and this would be great because you could easily go in and find uh, an individual or you could find the asset you could search through the database you could do a pivot table you could do a lot with this let's say you've got a a spreadsheet though that gets fairly large imagine if if you had all of this information and you ended up with uh, two or three hundred items in your spreadsheet then you could run into the possibility of problems you could have somebody whose contact name is Brad Prince you could have another person whose contact name is Bradley Prince now the problem here is whether or not this is the same person uh, is Brad Prince and Bradley Prince the same person or are they two different people it's part of the issue that's going on with some of the, uh, the voting uh, let's see registration right now uh, let's see I'm not sure we'll probably use this video for more semesters but I'm making this video about a couple of weeks before the presidential election in October of 08 the election being in November and there's been on the news how that um, some states ha are having issues I believe it may be Ohio are having issues with their uh, voter registration because they've got people that's been registered multiple times they don't match driver's license numbers their names don't match up with their database so they're having a lot of issues here well you can see how that if you had this filled out and you had this out to two or three hundred items that it would start to get complicated. Well, what if you had instead of one large spreadsheet, what if you had different sheets? And you had one sheet, we'll rename this contact, and let's name this one asset. So here you have uh, a list of contact information, uh, everything that we have up there, but you add a uh, contact. ID number and then on the asset oh, I'm sorry I'm on the asset page so let me change this asset information and we'll name this asset ID number on the contact page you have the same thing you've got uh, contact info everything we just talked about and a contact ID number okay now, now that you have contact information and contact ID number, what you've created is a way to reference between the two sheets. So rather than having for each asset you'd list the contact, even if the contact is already there, you would just have Brad Prince and then my contact ID number is 16. Okay, now on the assets page, let's say you've got asset one asset two 
asset three, whatever they are. You've got all the, all the information in for those assets. Well, you give them a specific ID number of one, two, and three, but then you assign them to someone's contact ID number. Now, there's a lot less repetition here because now what I have is that I can reference the contact ID number here. So if I want to see who the actual owner is, I go over to the contact page and I look up contact ID number 16. If I want to see, uh, let's say there's uh, uh, John Doe, who's number 15. And I find John and I say, okay, well, let's see which assets John owns. So I go to the asset table and I can do a search here. I can do prioritization of order. If I've got a pivot table, I can find only contact ID number 15 and find the assets that John owns. So that's sort of the basis of what a database does for us, except it doesn't do it in spreadsheets. It does it in what we call tables. Now this is the database that you're going to download. And what I have opened up here is the assets page. You have two different tables within a, within a database, and the database being just like, just like two different sheets except it's a, called a table within a database. You've got your contacts table and your assets table and you notice that you've got a contact ID and an asset ID. Your contact ID is given a, a relationship to the owner part of the assets. So you've got a contact ID just like we just made and then within assets you've got another field called owner but the information is actually the contact ID number and so just like we just did these two are related between the two of them uh, so that's the purpose of a database and what you can what a database does for you it really sort of simplifies things now you can add more information here and you can relate these tables together uh, using relationships and we'll, we'll talk about relationships more later but you can create multiple tables you could have 15 or 20 tables of information and all of it could be pointed back to contact ID or it could be pointed to asset ID uh, so you can really uh, do a lot with databases and you don't have to create it uh, all of it yourself a lot of times there's templates for databases whereas with the spreadsheet we were going to have to create everything uh, and enter all of the information in within the spreadsheet. Now within a database you've got ways that help you uh, view the information and input the information. Let me pull up a table for you. Let's go over here to contacts. You'll notice that there's different looks here. You've got uh, you've got tables that looks pretty much like a spreadsheet. Then you've got the little boxes with the orange on the top of them and these are forms and then you have the green boxes which are reports so these are three different things